Lantern is one of only two Pokemon with the water electric typing. While it's super unique, Lantern isn't known as a necessarily strong Pokemon. However, it does have solid bulk with base 125 HP, and it also has two solid ability options in Water Absorb or Volt Absorb. Not knowing which ability Lantern is running gives it an advantage against opponents who may be scared to click water or electric moves on weaker team members. Lantern can play a solid support role with his access to Volt Switch to pivot around, and even Scald to hit for stab with a solid burn chance, which a lot of Pokemon don't have access to anymore. In general, Lantern is a fun Pokemon that can be built to support in a way that your team needs. Look, I love Lantern for multiple different reasons, but the fact that when they had the opportunity to make a crazy, scary anglerfish Pokemon, they instead went a completely different route and made this huggable little dolphin guy, and honestly, Lantern is amazing and nobody ever uses this thing, and that's what I'm here for. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free, it only takes you a second, I promise you will not regret it, and uh, let's go ahead and get into the match here. So, you'll notice from the team preview, both of us are actually working with some sand action today, and that's going to make this battlefield all sorts of sandy and create kind of an interesting dynamic. So, my opponent decides to lead off with the Iron Crown as I just lead off with the Hippo. I want to try to prioritize getting my Stealth Rock up here, but then I'm like, you know what? I'm actually just going to click the Earthquake. There's not really much that wants to necessarily take it. And also, I can really punish this Iron Crown if it decides to stay in, but of course, they have different ideas, and they decide to switch into a Hippo of their own. There's Hip Hop Anonymous is all over the damn place, and my Earthquake doesn't do a whole lot of damage, shows me this thing is definitely a physically defensive variant, kind of just like mine, uh, and it also has the leftovers to get a little bit of health back. Now, I'm in a situation where we kind of just both get Stealth Rock up on each other for free at this point, but I decide I'm going to try to get a little bit of momentum with my Sand Slash going here. I'm going to switch into Knuckles, and I know that uh, it's very likely they just click the Stealth Rock here. Now, this thing comes in. Turns out they actually go for the Ice Fang, which does do less than half. However, turns my ass into a Sandy Popsicle, my favorite flavor, and uh, it's actually real bad news. I'm just frozen in time over here, and uh, the freezes always come when you least expect them. So... That is actually really annoying, and I'm like, okay, well, I could switch here, or I just kind of accept the fact that Sand Slash is probably going to be useless here. So, I just decide to see if I thaw out on the first turn, which, yeah, no, I, I, I'm deeply frozen over here, which allows them to go for that Earthquake, and yeah, with the stab, that's definitely going to kill the Sand Slash, and definitely a bad play on my end. I probably wasn't going to be able to get up a sub in a Swords Dance against this thing, but listen, with Sand Slash, sometimes you just got to try some shit, so... At this point, I can switch into whatever I want, and my team doesn't really like this Hippo a lot, to be honest. The one one thing that can get some super effective damage is going to be the Lantern here. Now, of course, I run the risk of getting hit by an Earthquake, but we are not afraid of no Hippos. I can go for a Scald here, as they do not want to take that, and they decide to switch out here. So, the good news about clicking Scald is that it does a lot of damage to whatever they want to switch in, and of course, also gives us the option to try to get a burn here. So... In comes the Iron Crown, and it doesn't take a whole lot of damage there. We also do not get the burn, uh, which doesn't matter a whole lot. However, at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and click the Volt Switch. I'm thinking maybe this is a Stealth Rock kind of lead Iron Crown, because they did lead with it. However, they just go for the Future Sight, and that is going to be definitely interesting to work around here. As I get the Volt Switch for some solid damage, and Lantern is out here doing what it's supposed to do. Just be kind of a nice little support guy, pivot around a bit, burn some stuff, potentially... Uh, and now we get an opportunity to switch into, of course, whatever we want against the Iron Crown. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go you know, right back into the Sandy Hippo and try to get my Stealth Rock here. I want to try to punish switching as much as possible. And I also have a good matchup here. So it's going to be one of my easiest chances to get up that Stealth Rock. So they, of course, do switch out. They're just going to go right back into their own Hippo once again. Uh, and this thing is looking pretty damn healthy and annoying. Again, I don't really have much offensive pressure against this thing, especially being probably max physical defense. Uh, is what I'm assuming this thing's working with. So I do at least get my Stealth Rock up, which is really nice. And we're just looking in a damn mirror over here, trying to figure out what the best course of action is. I decide I'm going to opt for some chip against this Hippo. The future side attack is still in the air. And uh, I know that his best damage is going to be Ice Fang. I'm going to Ice Fang him. It's kind of just we're doing, our, we're doing our thing over here. Now, I actually end up getting a critical hit, which is kind of nice. It does drop this thing below half. Now, the bad news is the future side attack from the Iron Crown does finish me off. So... Down goes my Hippo, which was a good check to that Iron Crown, 
um, and their physical attackers like the Houndstone thing. However, at least now this does give me the momentum in trying to bring in a revenge switch. And I'm like, okay, who's the best option here? I do have the Doug Trio. And with the Sandstorm up, I do, of course, have my Sand Force ability intact, which gives me a nice little boost in damage. And I'm just going to bring out uh, Dirty Doug and the boys. Now, I am floating in the air with my Air Balloon, which is important to note, as I'm just going to go for the Earthquake here as my highest damage. It is boosted by the Sand Force. However, the damn Hippo is way too bulky. It's able to live it, but they actually go for the Earthquake. They missed the messaging from the air balloon and that is actually extremely clutch for me and kind of hilarious because Doug Trio should be one of the Pokemon that should not be allowed to carry the air balloon because guys are literally inside of the ground but in, I'm actually floating above it however <laughs> that allows me uh, to go for one more earthquake here to finish off the hippo so we get some luck there and uh, it's actually very clutch having that air balloon still intact. So now they get a revenge switch, and they decide to go into everybody's favorite water fire donut boy, the Volcanion. And I'm thinking, okay, if they bring this in, that likely means they Terra here. And I also have a really good check to this thing, which is going to be the Lantern. I'm actually working with the Water Absorb, so I'm thinking maybe I come in, absorb some water attack, and have a good time. However, they actually just go right for the Fire Spin. And this thing is just walking the edge of death over here because I could have just clicked the Earthquake. Um, but Volcanion gets the fire spin off. Of course, Assault Vest Lantern takes hits all day from pretty much any damn special attack. And at this point, I expect them to probably want to switch. They likely don't stay in here. So that allows me a turn to go for a nice little free Scald and roll for another potential burn. As they go back into the Iron Crown, this thing probably thinks he can take an attack. I throw some hot water at his ass and it actually does end up knocking this thing out. So... That's actually huge for me. That's one of the biggest threats out of the way. Doug Trio does outspeed it, but uh, that's just one less huge offensive option that they have left. So they're actually just going to go right back into the Volcanion at this point. And I'm like, okay, surely this thing has some type of tricks under its sleeve. I'm going to get the hell out of here. I go for the Volt Switch. Uh, and outspeeding is actually amazing. I probably could have clicked the T-Volt there to knock this thing out. But again, I'm still just afraid of the, the random back pocket Terra. Uh, and at this point, I'm like, alright, I can probably bring Gengar in to take pretty much any attack from this thing. Um, completely forgetting about the fact that this thing does get ground coverage in the form of Earth Power. I'm not even going to lie, I did not expect that Earth Power. That shit just straight up knocks out my Gengar, and I'm like, well, damn, that, uh, that is unfortunate. So, misplay on my end wastes my Gengar, and that really kind of sucks, but uh, we, we move, and we try, to, <laughs> we try to see if we can pull it back. So... At least I can bring back in the Doug Trio. And the good thing about the Volcanion at this point is that it can't switch out. If it comes back in, it just dies to Stealth Rock. So I can get the free Earthquake here, finishes off that thing, and you will not be hurting anybody any longer. So the three Stooges grab, our nice, grab ourselves a nice little kill over here, bouncing around with our luscious ass hair. And it's also important to note, I do still have that Air Balloon intact, which means Tyranitar comes in. However, it cannot go for an Earthquake, and it's going to have to try to pop that balloon if it wants to get some damage, which means I can actually freely go for an Iron Head. Now, the reason why I go for Iron Head over Earthquake is because I expect, again, maybe a, a Flying Terra. They do not, and they actually take this opportunity to set up the late game Stealth Rock. So, uh, the, the rocks are going to be a little bit annoying, but honestly, not that big of a deal. I'm more happy to still have my Air Balloon here, which allows me to go for another Iron Head, and that is going to take care of the Tyranitar. So, buddy, Godzilla fucking comes in just to place some rocks down and then dies, which is actually amazing. And uh, they do still have two massive threats on their side of the field. First of all is this Houndstone, and they also have an Excadrill. So Houndstone comes in here, and uh, they are going to end up going for the Shadow Sneak. Likely just want to try to pop that Air Balloon. It actually does a round half because these hot dogs are about frail as hell. Also, they pop my Balloon, which ruins my party, but allows me to go for the Earthquake and doesn't quite knock this thing out. This Dug Trio has been... Just on the cusp of having enough damage all damn day, which is annoying. But at this point, they go for the Terra. They finally bust out the Terra that I've been afraid of this entire damn time. And it turns out to be the Ghost Terra. So they're going to go for the Terra Ghost just to give them uh, an extra boost to their Ghost Stab here. And that is sadly going to allow the Priority Shadow Sneak to take care of the Doug Trio. So Doug Trio goes down. Um, I needed my Air Balloon to be able to beat the Excadrill. Uh, but there's not really much I could do in this situation. Down goes... Uh, the Doug Tree. I probably could have switched into slacking there, but it's just too risky knowing if I make a wrong prediction, I'm in a bad spot. So at least now I can bring in the loaf of bread. Buddy's just loafing around, chilling in the sand. Uh, and at this point, I have uh, a suspicion that this thing might be choice banded from the damage it did to the Doug Trio, which means it can't click anything against uh, the slacking here, which allows me to freely click the knockoff. Now, I go for the knockoff instead of Earthquake because of the chance that Excadrill 
uh, is air balloon but it comes in it is not floating in the air i tell him to knock it off anyway it almost actually ends up knocking this thing out uh, and it also gets rid of its life orb which in this situation is kind of bad because now without a life orb it's going to be able to not like knock itself out with the recoil However, at this point, I'm feeling like slacking is my win condition. So here's what I'm going to do. I switch into the Lantern, thinking, okay, I, I sack off the Lantern to an Earthquake here. I don't want to take the Truant turn. And then I get back into slacking, and two Sucker Punches win me the game. But they have different ideas. They decide to go for the Sword Stance. They're going for that late game sweep here. And uh, a Sword Stance Excadrill is extremely scary. However, we do have one last trick. I'm thinking I can actually commit the Terra Flying. Surely this thing has to go for the ground move here and allowing the lantern to get a little taste of what it's like to be in the air here. Nothing like a, a flying fish. It's supposed to be a guy that lives in the bottom of the damn ocean. I go for that Terra flying, thinking surely they have to click a ground move. They go for the drill run. Of course, does not affect me. Lantern, extremely clutch. I'm able to then finish this thing off with a Scald, and down goes the Excadrill. So that is actually hilarious. There's balloons been all over the place, uh, and Lantern... Usually is a kind of kind of guy that just takes a, a back seat and being more of a support fella, but we're actually just out here grabbing kills with the lantern. And now their final Pokemon is gonna be the Houndstone. So it comes in, literally lives the Stealth Rock chip by like one HP, which uh, is scary. But at this point, I basically just have to stay in here. It is gonna outspeed me, but they actually go for the Psychic Fangs, which I'm able to live because Lantern has got the thickness, and I finish it off with a Scald. So that is gonna be the end of the game, and. Uh, that was a super interesting match there. There's definitely some misplays on both ends. However, it's very fun and uh, always a good time. So, listen, if you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like on the video. I really do appreciate all the support. You guys have been uh, amazing lately. And uh, thank you guys very much. I will catch you next time. Peace out.